there's going to be more slides than usual in this. I want to start out by saying just because I think this is kind of some new concepts and I think the slides do a good, better job of explaining the concepts. So we're going to talk about what is NoSQL, what is MongoDB, look at some basic usage, and then look at FireDAC plus MongoDB. I'm not going to cover this in as much depth as I like, but if you want to learn more, Code Rage 10, I'm planning to have at least one full session on this that's going to go into more detail. So check that out. You can register now at thecoderage.com. Basically, NoSQL is the answer to the question is, what would databases look like if they didn't use SQL? If they didn't have the a lot of the concepts we consider to be RDBMS concepts, Relational Database Management Systems concepts. So they favor speed and scalability over these RDBMS features that we typically think of as a database. So it's really a concept or an idea of how to reinvent the database. Uh, there's a large variety of different NoSQL databases, and it means something different to all of those in there out there. So it's not really a standard. Not all NoSQL databases are compatible. Each one's going to be completely unique in and of itself. So that brings us to MongoDB. Now, if you take and you graph all sorts of databases or things you consider databases with uh, along this graph here with speed and scale being on the uh, up axis and features being on the horizontal axis, you get this graph that looks something like this here. And so you start out with a uh, a service like Memcache, which is a um, distributed object memory cache. All it does is cache op objects memory, okay? Very little features for querying and stuff like that. So hardly any features at all, just storing objects memory. And then on the right, we have a full RDBMS, like Interbase, okay? So basically the idea is, is that you're trading off features for speed and scale between these two. So MongoDB, basically tries to find that sweet spot between features and speed and scale. Okay, now it scales really the thing that sets you NoSQL know, databases apart is that they're able to be scaled so much that you can have replication and shards and all this great replication and scaling features. So it's not trying to say that all RDBS is, is slow, but uh, the idea is MongoDB allows for greater scaling and therefore greater speed. So what is MongoDB? MongoDB is a document-oriented database, okay? So in MongoDB, documents are stored as name-value pairs in BSON. Now, BSON is basically a binary version of JSON. We'll look at that briefly in a little bit. But it can contain um, regular name values as well as embedded documents or arrays, which really reduces the need for joins. So in a traditional RDBMS, you'd have you know, one-to-many and many-to-many -many relationships and one-to-one -one relationships between these different tables. That's a relational database concept. In MongoDB, you don't have that concept. Instead, you embed the data in there. So really, you've denormalized your data into one document. So also, it's, there's dynamic schemas in MongoDB, so there's no consistent schema. All records don't have to match the same schema. This allows you to really deal with much more complex data because it's unstructured. So what exactly is a MongoDB document? Here's an example of a document here. So first of all, this is in JSON. There's some subtle variations between what makes JSON and BSON, besides the fact that internally MongoDB stores the BSON in binary format instead of in a text representation like we see here. But so you'll notice the names are in quotes, the string values are in quotes, whereas no, numerical values are not, and everything's separated by, by commas. But also we have the square braces for phone numbers represents an array. So that array contains, in this case, uh, additional embedded objects, just like so residential addresses an embedded object, fixed line, mobile, not, mobile, et cetera, are all embedded objects within the uh, parent record. So this is more unstructured, more uh, dynamic than you would typically see in an RDBMS. Let's look at some different vocabulary words here. So the idea of being a database is the same, but a table from an RDBMS becomes a collection. A record or a row becomes a document. And then a column is called a field. Now the rest of these uh, have the same equivalent names, although I will point out that schemas are different. There is some concept of a schema in our MongoDB, but it's not required in that you don't define the schema ahead of time. You just start putting data in the database. So a few notes, uh, all documents have an underscore ID field. Okay, so they automatically get that. That is a unique ID for that document. 
So a collection exists as soon as the document is added to it. So as soon as you start to insert into a collection, the collection appears. You remove all the documents and the collection is no longer there. So a collection only exists when there's documents within it. So one note, and this is um, a conceptual idea, really not a hard, fast rule. But like I said, you don't need a schema. There is no a schema that defines what the documents look like but typically speaking you're going to have some similarities between the documents you're not going to put completely different types of documents in the same collection a collection is going to usually have similar documents and those documents will have some fields that are going to be similar from document to document but maybe not all fields and so that's where the no required schema comes in now it's called NoSQL because it doesn't use SQL, but it does have its own query language, which is going to be different from NoSQL database to NoSQL database. And this is a very powerful language, it has complex logic, even has the ability to do regular expressions. We're just going to scratch the surface on what you can do with this. They have some good documentation, though, as far as what you can do with their query language. I just want you to know there is it's really powerful, really advanced, and there's actually things you can do with uh, MongoDB that you really can't do with SQL database queries. So uh, it's actually, there's a few things it really lends itself to. Okay, so installing MongoDB is actually pretty straightforward. You just choose whether it's 32-bit or 64-bit. For Windows, they have an OS X install as well, which um, you can find out about. Uh, but I'm going to talk about Windows installation specifically here. The default environment, though, is C colon data slash DB. Now, when you're installing, it doesn't tell you this. And when you finish installing, there is no shortcuts on your desktop or in your start menu. And so you have to go to their documentation actually to learn how to start it. But essentially, there's an executable called MongoD, Mongo D Daemon, I believe it is. And you just run that, and that will start MongoDB. Uh, there's some options for that. So check out that tutorial, which is the first link at the bottom there. And that's on MongoDB, and that goes into details about how to start it. You can actually set it up to start as a service, so it starts automatically, or you can start it manually by running MongoD, and then you use Control-C to terminate it, and it cleans up itself and shuts down appropriately. So now, as far as FireDAC goes, we actually have some new units and new components. Uh, you see the new units listed there, and there's four components. We still use the FD connection, so you're, that's not a new component. That's the existing FD connection you're used to with all your FireDAC connections, but it now has the ability to connect to MongoDB. And then from there, you have new components of a Mongo query, which is able to use that new MongoDB query language in order to do queries. You have a Mongo data set, which is able to connect to a MongoDB cursor and store that complex data. And you also have the idea of a pipeline, which allows you to execute pipelines to collections, which is we're not going to really get into today, but hopefully we'll get a chance to cover that in Code Rage 10. Beyond the components and units, we also have some low-level classes. And you're, you're going to end up using these. So I'm just going to touch, touch on them here, and then I'll show you some more in the code. You have the Mongo connection. And this is what manages the connections to the database. You also have a Mongo database, which you like you can get from the connection, you can say, hey, connection, what databases do you have? And get the connections databases out of there. And then within database, you have collections. And so, and then within collections, you can then get a cursor, which when you do a query, you get a cursor back that you can use to iterate through that cursor. We have these new Fluent style builders. So Fluent, you'll see the example code is it's a coding format, if you will, according style to build these updates or selectors or inserts, or indexes, etc. Okay, so now let's have a quick demonstration. The first sample I'm going to show you here is the JSON workbench. Now, this you can use to come in and look at the code to see how it does things, but you might also use it as a utility. So this allows you to take a JSON document and beautify it by making it using some standard formatting. You can also minify it to remove the spacing and then convert it to a Delphi uh, string concatenation statement here. Probably the most useful, though, is that you can use the writer with builders to create a uh, builder object. So this uses the Fluent Builders to write out the JSON, kind of like we used to do with the DOM in XML years ago, except I think a lot cooler. So you can see here, you begin an object called Glossary, and you add a title, example Glossary, etc. So this is using the Fluent Builders, which Fluent Builders is like I mentioned earlier with the uh, what we're going to use for like building queries and stuff like that, which I'll show you later. But it's just an example of that. So you can paste this into your Delphi application to create this object at runtime. And then here is where it shows you how it converts from JSON to BSON. So this is a uh, hexadecimal representation of the binary representation of the JSON. And it will convert back again, which removes the spaces in the process. So you can come in here and take a look at the code. 
um, most of the interesting code is in the converters unit here. So you can actually just copy this converters unit wholesale into your application. And if you wanted to convert um, JSON to JSON builder code, you just come in here and take a look at what it's doing to do that. Okay, and this is making use of the new system.json namespace. The MongoDB dataset demo shows you how to work with the FD Mongo query. A couple things to note about this, the three grids here each have their own data source, but the data sources are all going to be tied back to this one query because that query is going to contain nested data sets. If we go in here and look at this, we can see right here where the nested data sets are attached. So this has an address dot coordinates contains a nested data set that we're attaching here and the grades to nested data set that we attach to these two different data sources. Now, when we run the query, there's actually uh, two different ways to use the query. You can use the query property where you pass in the T Mongo query, which you build using the Fluent Builder, or you can just patch in, pass in the match. Now the match is going to take a JSON string that it's going to look for documents that have matching field names and values. So it's going to look for any document that has both has the field names listed and the values provided for those documents. Now if you use the Q match, which is where you pass in that matching JSON element, then you can also use the Q project and Q sort. Now Q project is for the projection, which is going to be where you specify which fields of the document you want to come back. And the Q sort is where you specify the sort of the output. So let's go and take a look at this running. So if I run this, it's going to fetch restaurants that have a cuisine of Italian and address zip code of 10075. Now notice that it's address dart zip code. That's because address is an object, embedded object in the restaurant document. So the address has the sub fields here. And so to specify the zip code, we specify address dot zip code. Now again, here we have the uh, embedded arrays and those are embedded down here in these other grids. So we can see all the values there. And if I was to click on one of these, I could actually bring up a the dialog there as well. Now, a couple notes about this query syntax. I can actually use a different format here where I say address.zip code is equal to the value of, and then I specify an object here equals 10075. Now, this is going to run exactly the same. See, nothing changed. It just went back to the first record. But the interesting thing here is I can actually change this now. Instead of saying equals, I can say not equals. And then there's other operators you can do there, like less than, greater than, so on and so forth. So there's, uh, this is a simple format to the syntax, just using the name and value. But you can also expand this with logical operators uh, and so on and so forth, including regular expressions. So in SQL, we would use a like statement. So this, like this, and here you'd use a regular expression to say, I want everything that matches, contains this regular expression. Okay, so that's a really quick intro to using the JSON query component. Now the Mongo basic demo shows how to use some of the low level objects. So on the form, we have our FD connection that connects to the Mongo database. Now internally, we cast that to a uh, T Mongo connection. So the client object here gets connected to a Mongo connection. And that's what we're going to use to deal with it here. So for example, inside the insert, we're going to uh, go to our connection, specify our database within the connection. And then within the database, we specify which collection we want to work with the restaurants collection and remove all. So it's going to remove all documents from the restaurants collection in the test database. Then we're going to build a new uh, object in here to insert. So ODOC is a T Mongo document and we build it here using this fluent syntax. So uh, it has a, an address field, and the address field contains these uh, fields within it. So it's an embedded object. And then when we're done, we go down here and say to the connection, we say test restaurant insert the document we just created. So that's how you do an insert. Uh, here's an example doing a find. This is actually going to do a insert first just so there's data to find. And right here it's building a find, so dot find. And we say we're going to match. Um, and here we're doing, getting, again, building the object using the fluent syntax. So we're going to match F1 is greater than five. 
and end object. So that's our match. And then here's our sort. And then, as I mentioned, you, your query can have three parts, which using query syntax or objects or using the queue match, queue sort, and queue project. So I can actually add a project on the end of this here that would be project right there. I could then build a project, which would be the projection, which specify which field they want to receive back. And then also you can specify a limit. In this case, we're going to say we only want to receive five back. So that's a quick example of how you would use the fluent syntax to build a find, which is how you would query to find documents within a collection. This is a MongoDB demo I put together that uses the Mongo query in C++. One thing that's different between this and the dataset one in Delphi, Object Pascal, is I've added a sort and projection field here. So when you tap the open button, it puts these in the queue match, queue sort, and queue projection. So this shows you how you can edit the projection and the sort on a query um, using the individual parts. Now, you can combine this all together into one using the query property of the um, Mongo query, but this just shows you how to do it by the individual parts, which makes it a little easier to edit. And this also shows how to do the uh, nested data sets. And since we have a projection possibility change on here, we have to check to see if the data set exists, or check to see if the field exists that contains the nested data set, which we're doing here. So we'll run this. And I'm going to go ahead and execute the default one. So we can change the uh, sort here on the cuisine. We can change it to sort the other direction. Let me see if sort of the other direction. We can remove the projection here, which will put everything back. Now, a note about projection is the ID is always there. So if I do this, it should only show me the address in the cuisine because that's the only thing I've selected. See, everything else is gone. But ID is always there unless you put a zero on it. All right, so that's how you remove the ID. And up here, we're showing the cuisine option using the not equals operator instead of, so this says anything that matches it. So this is equals. This is showing not equals. So this is equals. So that's everything is Italian, not equals, everything that's not Italian. Uh, so that shows you an example of the other way you can do the operators on there. So there you go, a quick, quick uh, introduction to doing match, sort, and projection using C++ Builder and MongoDB. So for more information, check out mongodb.org. That first link is to the installation guide like I mentioned earlier. The second link there is to their documentation, which is pretty good about explaining CRUD introduction, CRUD creating, reading, updating, and deleting um, documents from within a collection. And again, you don't have to ever create collections because a collection exists as soon as you put a document within it. Uh, DocWiki link there explains how to connect to MongoDB. There's a link to the samples folder. They're currently only object Pascal samples. There's no C++ samples, although uh, at least at the a higher level working with the components, it's going to be very, very similar. There's very little code you have to deal with. It's just like you would work with any other data set, um, except with the variations I showed you there. A couple of books here I'm recommending. Uh, the first one, Instant MongoDB, which is a short introduction to MongoDB that uh, it cover, has a chapter that covers installation and it covers like what are the key things you need to know about MongoDB. So if you don't want to read a lot, that's the one I recommend. If you do want to read a lot, check out MongoDB, the definitive guide. Um, it's the definitive guide for MongoDB, or at least that's the goal. It contains a lot more detailed information about MongoDB. Uh, Instant MongoDB is available um, through Packet Press, which is the one that publishes the Delphi Cookbook as well. And MongoDB is available through uh, O'Reilly, which they also have the Delphi in a nutshell from a few years back. So uh, both of those are available. I got those as ebooks. Uh, check that out um, from O'Reilly.com. Also, if you want more information, Code Rage 10 available uh, October 13th to the 15th. Register for that at thecoderage.com. Okay, it's so cool to see NoSQL support uh, finally in FireDeck. Um, Jim and or Al, uh, there was a question that came in about the what are the advantages of BSON versus JSON? So basically BSON is, is a binary representation of JSON. And uh, so it's, it's stores and transmits, it's more compact because there's not 
it doesn't have to do the text representation. So that's that's really the main thing. There, I believe there's some subtle differences in what you can do with BSON versus JSON, but I don't know JSON well enough to know what rules maybe BSON expands on. Um, so. Yep, that's my understanding also. Uh, Bison or BSON is supposed to be designed to be more efficient in storage space and scanning speed, uh, but the uh, the key the key word there is it was designed to be that way. It just depends on how you implement it to make sure you're going to get those uh, advantages. If you take so, like for example, I showed the JSON workbench. Any JSON can be converted into to BSON. Um, but I think there's some things you could add on top of that as well. But yeah, the big thing is it just is this more advantage. And I've seen on on Stack Overflow, there's been some folks who've posted benchmarks comparing uh, BSON and JSON, so you can take a look at those. That C++ demo I just showed, I uh, added a link. If you go to Delphi.org, it should be the very top post on there. Or if you go to Delphi.org slash tags slash MongoDB, you'll be able to find it later in the future. Yeah, I just wanted to mention that that JSON BSON uh, viewer or explorer is a sample that ships with Rad Studio 10 Seattle. Uh, you would go to, I think, samples and then Object Pascal or C++, go into database. Uh, fire deck and I think is the sample there or is it somewhere else Jim I, I get lost after that I had to search for the sample I don't remember let me see if I can find I'll it go the rat. I'll go oh, to yeah. the rat source I have it I'll handy hold on I have oh, it handy, handy well, it's a here. race now the race is on <laughs> I need to like build it once and put it in my tool transfer menu that's where I have to I think that's where the where it needs to go on, on my uh, tool menu so it's always there we did that originally with the uh, with the rest debugger it was shipped as a sample from a ratted action webinar and then we uh, we built it and it's now permanently ensconced in the tools transfer menu but uh, so it lives okay. uh, it lives on the object Pascal RTL JSON okay. Okay. That where it is, and uh, the one that we may be shipped with might have been missing some files. So as as we mentioned before, right click on the sample or delete it and update it from Subversion just to make sure you got all the correct files for using the uh, JSON workbench. I found that it just had some of the uh, files had the wrong names. I just renamed a couple of the files and it was able to build for it. So okay. So well, I, I love that we got that entire. Yeah, I love that we got that entire samples directory hooked up to Subversion. So anything wrong delete the folder, update, and you get the latest and greatest.